First time I came back from Spain and I told my friends that I liked their food, my friends and a lot of people in the USA didn't know what Spanish food was. They thought I meant Mexican food. They were talking about tacos, they were talking about burritos, they were talking about enchiladas and the kinds of things that you get as Mexican food. Well, that's not Spanish food and people know that now. Back then they didn't. So nowadays you tell people you like Spanish food and they're most likely to say, oh, you mean like paella, you like paella. Well, paella is one of the more famous Spanish foods to come out of Spain that everybody in the USA knows now because a whole bunch of people in the USA now make paella and they do a really bad version of it. So don't, don't use that as your concept of what Spanish food is like. But Spanish food is a heck of a lot more than just paella and it's certainly not tacos, burritos, or enchiladas. See, I thought, you know, as long as we're here in Spain, we should probably tell those of you who are thinking of coming here what kinds of foods you ought to try eating when you're in Spain. Let me tell you some of the foods we like absolutely the best here. One of my favorite foods here that they have is called cocido or cocido madrileño. That is a stew. It's made out of multiple different kinds of meats and vegetables and broths and they have chickpeas in it and they have all kinds of things. It's a really hearty stew. It's great on a cold Madrid night. And here in Madrid, one of the best places that makes cocido madrileño is La Bola. We ate at La Bola and their cocido was delicious. We've also heard that Lardi makes a very nice cocido and we've never been there but their restaurant is very well respected and liked here. And so if you're looking to try a cocido, something that's really typically Spanish, something that's an ancient dish because it's six, seven, eight hundred years old, you should try it here in Madrid at La Bola or at Lardi. And either of those places are a great place to try it. That's one dish you should try. Another dish you should try that's definitely typical Spanish is tortilla española or tortilla de patatas and uh, tortilla de patatas you find on bars everywhere they they make well actually a tortilla is the essence of what people nowadays refer to as a spanish omelet and what a tortilla de patatas is is they mix up eggs like they're making up an omelet and they take potatoes and they saute up the potatoes and they saute up some onions and some garlic and some olive oil and they cook them together into a round disc about that thick. They make them into that, they cut them in wedges and you have a wedge with some beer. Now having a Spanish tortilla and a glass of beer is a classic afternoon tapa. It's also a nice little lunch if you want something as a light lunch and sometimes people will have a nice tortilla española as a breakfast dish. I love my tortilla española. I like to have it as much as I can when I'm here. Now there's a place here in Madrid that's really well known for their tortilla española. It's a place called Casa Dani. Casa Dani, we had planned on going there this trip, but we weren't able to make it. So we're not gonna be able to actually show you. We can show you pictures of it, but we can't show you us eating there. You should definitely try it. There's another place near the Plaza Mayor called Maison de, I believe it's Maison de la Tortilla which means basically the inn of the tortilla. And they make really good tortillas. They also make a really good sangria. And you know, there's nothing better than to sit in the evening with a glass of sangria and a wedge of tortilla. And you, and you sit there and you eat and you drink and you watch the people promenade by in the evenings because promenading around town is a big Spanish custom here. And I love to go, while I normally don't like to go near the, uh, near the Plaza Mayor to eat or drink anything, 
if I'm going for people watching, I may go someplace and get a wedge of tortilla and a glass of sangria, which is just a wonderful thing to do and watch at about seven, eight o'clock when it's still light and watch the Spanish people. Definitely try some tortilla española while you're here. This takes me back to when I was in college and in our dorm in the basement we had a little bar and in the bar uh, we had a bartender who used to have a wedge of tortilla on the bar at all times. You could get that, you could get yourself a glass of beer and a little tortilla. Mm. So good. I still remember the bartender's name was Manolo. Another classic Spanish dish that almost everybody loves when they come here to Spain, and you don't get it anyplace else, is something called churros con chocolate. Churros con chocolate is made all over town. You can get it in bars, you can get it in chocolate shops, you can get it in bakeries. I personally think that the best combination of churros con chocolate is at a place called Chocolateria San Gines, which is just outside of the Plaza Mayor. It's not next to the Plaza Mayor, but it's a few streets down. And it's a wonderful place to go get your churros and chocolate because their churros are the best churros that you can get with chocolate, uh, with a, a really good cup of chocolate. So they don't do the best churros, they don't do the best chocolate, but the combination I think is the best. Other places to get churros with chocolate that I definitely would recommend, and I have actually created a list so I don't forget to mention them all. Uh, here at San Gines, there's also a place called Ch Chocolat, which makes a more rich French-style chocolate in their churros and chocolate. Uh, El Riojano makes a really nice cup of chocolate. They melt the chocolate bar. It's virtually nothing else but melted chocolate bar, but they don't have churros with it. Instead, they have solotillos, which are little like lady fingers that you dip in it, and that's really good. Another place, Las Farolas. Las Farolas also supposedly makes some great churros con chocolate. And Valor. I love the chocolate at Valor. I think they have the best not chocolate, hot chocolate in town. Although their churros aren't as good as what you'll get at San Gines, their chocolate is very good. And finally, there's a place called Chocolateria Sin Noventa y Dos. That's 1902, Chocolateria 1902. They're actually kind of on the other side of the Calle Mayor, and they actually have a guy who makes chocolate. You can watch him making the churros, and, um, and the churros and chocolate there are also excellent. Young and I spent an evening just drinking chocolate and eating churros there. Another thing you don't want to miss while you're here in Spain, incredible food, gazpacho. Gazpacho is a soup made of Spanish tomatoes. And Spanish tomatoes are grassy, they're fresh tasting. They don't taste like tomatoes you'll have anywhere else in the world, but it's so good. And to make them into gazpacho, they blend them up along with some onions, garlic, olive oil, and uh, just a whole bunch of, of spices and greens. They're so good. Uh, definitely get some gazpacho, especially if you're here in the summer, because gazpacho is a summer treat because the tomatoes are ripe then. Definitely get some gazpacho. And another thing you can try while you're here is called salmorejo. Salmorejo 
is like gazpacho, but it's a little bit thicker and it's more like a dip than like a soup, though you can drink it. That's actually more common in the south part of Spain, in the Andalusia area. You get your salmorejo, which is like a tomato soup dip, delicious. I'll, I'll take salmorejo or gazpacho, either one, any day of the week, five times a week for a meal. Now this is a classic gazpacho and it is really the best in town. I got mine with croutons in it and egg grated on top. It's very good. Look how rich and thick this is. This is so good, you can taste the tomatoes. And in Spain, the tomatoes taste like real tomatoes. They're fresh, they're delicious. They make the soup out of it. You can taste the grassiness of the tomatoes. You can taste the freshness of the fruit. It is so good. Whenever you're in Madrid in the summer or anywhere in Spain in the summer, get a gazpacho. If you're not, you can go to the southern part of Spain and get a summer. classic Spanish food that everybody in the USA knows about is sangria. Now sangria is not something that people who live in Spain drink very much. It's more of a tourist drink, but it's very good. It's basically wine, a little brandy, a little sugar, maybe some cinnamon and fruit juice all mixed up together. It's a nice refreshing drink. As I said, I love to get my glass of sangria, sit in the plaza, watch the people go by at sunset. A wonderful thing to do. If you want to drink the more Spanish version of it, you should get what's called Tinto Verano, which means the wine of summer. And that's basically, they'll take the same red wine and they'll mix it with some kind of fruit juice or lemonade. And uh, that also is very lighter. It's not as sweet, it doesn't have the brandy in it, but a lot of Spaniards like to drink their Tinto Verano rather than the sangria. And that's something you should try. Another dish here, amazing, called patatas bravas. And those are sauteed potatoes that they cover in a pimento sauce with mayonnaise. And I know just listening to it, it doesn't sound like it's amazing, but if you try it, you'll, you'll understand. It's an amazing dish. It's something that you can have with a glass of beer, as they say here, una caña. And you should definitely try it as one of your tapas here. This is Baratari's version of patatas bravas. Mayonnaise, so you dip it in both and you have your typical patatas bravas sauce. Pino is basically a roast suckling pig. You've heard about it because if you read Hemingway, he talks about the restaurant Potin which is one of the oldest operating restaurants in the world, and they specialize in cochineo. It's a roast suckling pig. They bring it out it's just sizzling on a dish. It's so soft they cut it with a plate, and people really know about that. Well, Botin isn't the only place to get cochineo. They have it everywhere. It's a specialty of the town of Segovia, which is just maybe 100 miles to the west of Madrid here, and Young and I have eaten it there, and it's very good. But here in Madrid, we had cochineo at a place called El Senador, which is a classic Spanish restaurant. It feels like a restaurant from the 1700s. All the locals are there eating their cochineo and their roast lamb. By the way, roast lamb is another wonderful dish here. Uh, their cochineo is tender, it's soft, the skin is crispy and crackly, it's delicious. There's a place we ate at a few trips ago called Juana La Loca. Juana La Loca is named after the crazy queen of Spain. Uh, Juana la Loca apparently went insane, but was still one of the most beloved queens here in Spain. She did some crazy stuff. Well, they have a restaurant named after here, after her here, and the restaurant Juana la Loca is one of our favorite places to go. Get tapas, get a light meal, but they also make one of the best cochineos in town. So do not forget cochineo. Padron, 
the peppers of the indulgent father is about is the best way you can translate it. The pimientos de padron, they will saute peppers in olive oil. They'll cover them with salt and they serve them in a tray warm with a, a glass of beer on the side. Young and I, one time, we decided we wanted to go and we wanted to have something to eat, but it was siesta time and most of the places were closed. But there was this one bar that was open and we went in and what their specialty was, was pimientos de padron. We went there and we tried it. The peppers are green, most of them are sweet, but once in a while you get a really spicy one that'll burn the bottom of your mouth out. And so they call that the Spanish version of Russian roulette. You get your pimientos de padron, make sure to get your glass of beer in case you get a spicy one, and you eat them. And you can just eat them nonstop. They're sweet, they're tasty, and they're spicy. They're wonderful. Get your pimientos de padron. Two places that are really well known here for pimientos de padron. There's a place called Melos, M-E-L-O, and they're supposed to have some of the best in town. And also, Taberna y Sul de Huertes. And that supposedly makes amazing pimientos de padron. We weren't able to make it there this trip, but we definitely can recommend that you go based on all of the reviews we've read about the place. Paella. Everyone in the U.S. knows about paella. It's one of the most famous dishes from Spain. But it's really not a dish of Madrid. It's a dish of Valencia or Alicante. Those two towns make paella. The classic Valencia paella is actually made from rabbit and snails. And if you like that type of food, try it there. It's supposed to be excellent. Young and I are not rabbit fans and we're not snail fans, so we've never tried it but we hear it's good. We, on the other hand, have tried multiple paellas. We like them with the seafood in it. They can come with calamari, shrimp. Uh, they can come with mussels or clams. They can come with fish. Or they can come as just a, a meat paella, like chicken and vegetables, or pork and pork ribs. Those are all really wonderful. This trip, we stopped at a place called Casa Benigna, and we just love their paella. I will tell you the paella we had there was as good or better than any paella we had anywhere in Valencia when we were there. And I would definitely recommend going to Casa Benigna if you're just going to spend time in Madrid. Yeah, young, young thought it was amazing. And if you're just going to spend time in Madrid and not go anyplace else, you should definitely try your paella there. But even if you're going someplace else, consider going to Casa Benigna because it was so good. The, the quality of everything at that place was wonderful, and I would recommend that. They are now preparing to bring out the stars of the show the paellas. Now, we've already eaten so much, we're pretty full already, and we probably shouldn't have ordered our separate paellas. We probably should have ordered a paella for one and split it, but we're going we're gonna to soldier on here. And ultimately, they brought out a little thing of mayonnaise and uh, some lemon wedges, and now they're going to bring out the paella. Young is getting her seafood, and I'm getting my pork rib, and my rice is a smoked rice which is unusual for paella, to get smoked rice and pork ribs. So I thought, let's try that, that's different, and uh, let's try it. So you see them scraping what's on the bottom of the pot there. That's the sofrito down at the bottom. They, they, the rice is burnt onto the bottom of the pan and you get crispy rice. My Korean family is going to definitely appreciate that. 
And that is one of the good things about a great paella, is you get this crispy rice at the bottom. Aside from paella, there's another dish that's very similar. It's called fidewa. Fidewa is like a paella that's made with noodles instead of rice. And we tried that here at a place called El Baril de Recoletos. And their fidewa was just amazing. They served it with solo mio, which is filet mignon. So you get the fidewa like a paella with steak in it. Just amazing. But they also make it with seafood. They also make it every other way. If you don't like rice, get fidewa. If you do like rice, get fidewa because fidewa is delicious and it's certainly something you should try. Don't come to Spain and say the only thing I'm going to eat is paella because you'll be missing out. Jamon. Do not miss jamon when you're in Spain. If you like Italian prosciutto, jamon is like that, only better. It's really good. It's a dry ham. It's not super salty like American hams. It's thin. It's shaped thin right off the leg of the pig. Uh, basically, jamon is made here very differently than when it's made everywhere else. Probably the best jamon known in Spain is called bellota. Bellota jamon is the richest, it's the most flavorful. The pigs are allowed to run wild and they eat nothing but acorns. They're black pigs uh, fed only on acorns. And when you taste the jamon, you can taste the acorn in the meat. It's so good. And even if you don't get bellota, you can get virtually any kind of jamon iberico and you're gonna wind up loving it because it's so good and it's, it's so much better than prosciutto. Okay, my Italian friends, I'm sorry, I like prosciutto but I love jamon. You've got to get jamon here. And uh, two of the best places, uh, El Museo de Jamon, they have everything from the cheapest yucky kind to the really finest type. So that's a good place to get it. And you can see El Museo de Jamon stores maybe every two or three blocks, especially in the tourist areas here. We're in front of the Museum of Ham, El Museo de Jamon. You can find it everywhere. They carry every kind of ham you, you would ever know that Madrid carries. And, uh, and they have all kinds of little tapas and beer. It, they're more a fast food place. They're not where you're gonna get super quality stuff, but you're gonna get decent stuff, especially if you're hungry and you wanna have a nice snack and maybe a caña, glass of beer. This is a good place to get it. There's another place called uh, El Mercado de Jamón Ibérico, and they are known to have some of the best jamones in town. You can go there, you can sample it. I'm sure you'll wind up walking away with a nice packet of it. It's delicious. In every restaurant that we go, they have a jamon dish. Yeah, and it is true. They will always almost have some kind of a jamon dish in every single restaurant where you go as an appetizer. Sometimes they just lay it out there and you can just eat it over bread. Sometimes, like in Sagardi when we were there, they put it over artichokes and then Young just wanted to eat all the jamon off the artichokes and, and leave me just the artichokes and no jamon. You have some nerve doing that. No, okay, no, I'm, I'm going to calm myself here. Uh, jamon, you can find it everywhere, but definitely try it while you're here. The last thing we want to remind you of to try to get, it's called croquetas. Croquetas are, in American, what you would call croquettes. They basically have some kind of filling, some kind of a breadcrumb, and they're deep fried. And while we were here this trip, we tried the spinach croquetas, which were just amazing, rich. It tasted like they were all spinach and cream and cheese, dipped in egg, breaded with breadcrumbs, deep fried, and oh my God, oh, I, I could live off those. Those are but they're super rich. But what the heck, get them. Another good type of croqueta, they make it with jamón y queso, ham and cheese, or jamón y champiñones, ham and mushrooms. And they fill that with bechamel sauce, and they put the jamón in it, chopped up, and they put mushrooms in it, and again, uh, cover it in egg, bread it in breadcrumbs, and deep fry it. You can have that with some beer or a glass of wine. You can have it as an appetizer. You can have it as a tapa. Definitely, get some croquetas while you're here. Don't miss it. Now, the thing about Spanish food, you know, it's not just paella. It's not just sangria. There's so many good things. One of the reasons Spanish food is so good is they use quality ingredients. The Spanish 
ingredients are amazing quality. They don't work it too hard. You know, I think, for example, French food, you're going to get good food, but they're going to put super rich sauces on it. They're going to cover up the flavor of the food. In Spain, they don't do that. They let the flavor of the food stand through. That's one of the reasons that you see more Michelin stars per restaurant here in Spain than anywhere else in the world. The ingredients are amazing. They respect the ingredients and they don't, they don't cover up the flavor. Come here, try this stuff. This is all just some of the most amazing food you'll try and you should definitely try some amazing food.